I'm Susan from Tarjack. You may know us as the source for the best camo for your guns and bows, but we do so much more. Our custom work with automotive parts can transform any vehicle, our ATVs, sleds, four-wheelers, motorcycles. We've received national recognition for our work with Orange County Choppers, and we are most proud of our partnership with the Future Servicemen by providing customized helmets for the Army-Navy game. From the national stage to your favorite hunting ground, it's Tarjack. Hello and welcome to this episode of the CNY Business Connection. I'm Jason Weinstein. Coming up on this week's show, IBM turns 100. See how the global icon, which was born right here in central New York, celebrated its centennial. But we'll begin with the latest in business news from around the area. The number of jobs declined from April to May, but overall the state has more jobs than it did a year ago, and the unemployment rate remains unchanged in May, according to the State Department of Labor. The state's economy lost more than 21,000 private sector jobs between April and May, but the state has gained more than 23,000 non-farm jobs and nearly 98,000 private sector jobs since last May. The biggest gains were in professional and business services, which added over 30,000 jobs, and education and health services, which added almost 30,000. The biggest losers were government, which lost over 74,000 jobs, and manufacturing, which lost just over 4,000 jobs. The Binghamton region added 200 non-farm jobs and 800 private sector jobs over the past year. The Syracuse region lost 800 non-farm jobs but gained 1,400 private sector jobs. The Utica-Rome area lost 1,300 non-farm jobs but did gain 400 private sector jobs. Some good news for Lockheed Martin and the area's workforce. The big aerospace company has inked a deal with the Australian government to perform work on a fleet of 24 of its latest generation MH-60R Seahawk helicopters for the land down under. It will be the first purchase of the Navy choppers outside of the U.S. Lockheed says the contract will have a positive impact on the company's Owego plant. One of the reasons others support hydrofracking is because of the new revenue streams it would provide. The money from gas drilling would help keep counties and municipalities from further raising property taxes to supplement shrinking federal and state dollars. But while drilling remains controversial, a large portion of New Yorkers agree with Governor Cuomo's call to freeze property taxes. That according to a new Siena poll. 37% of those polled say the property tax cap is the most important issue, and they want to see state legislators pass it. 22% say the proposed new ethics law is what they consider the top issue. Anyone for or against fracking could enjoy Frack You, a comedic play that focuses on the highly controversial topic of fracking. The play is set at a bar in upstate New York and involves people who are on both sides of the issue. More than 150 people packed the Discovery Center to watch the staged reading, members of the Southern Tier Actors Read, and written by Broome County native Laura Cunningham. I wanted to show both sides of the issue, because there are two sides, and I wanted to do it in a way that hasn't been done in a comedic form. Because when you go to the meetings, there is no laughing. You know, there are two positions. And I thought, when you can laugh about things, sometimes you can talk about them. I was pleased to see the balance. I um, still have some major misgivings about the whole fracking enterprise, but uh, I think we need to keep our minds open. It is so relevant, so it's kind of exciting to kind of feel in, you know, somehow a part of the debate. And it's a different kind of venue for a, for a conversation about the issue. The play was also a fundraiser for the Susquehanna River Trail. And a got native Johnny Bones Jones is a rising star in mixed martial arts, but now he's taking a fight to Albany. After winning the UFC light heavyweight title, Bones can be seen in the state's capital urging politicians to legalize MMA. The right to hold events in the state of New York, and the champ says he needs your help. The Endicott native writes in an email, I've been to Albany myself to talk to legislators, but I know that's not enough. Elected officials need to know that their constituents want this bill passed. That's where you come in. Please call your assemblyman or assemblywoman and ask your friends to do the same. New Yorkers strongly support making wine available in grocery stores. The bipartisan legislation is still in committee, and it appears unlikely it will be brought to a vote before lawmakers adjourn. But one local wine vendor worries how this could affect small businesses. We also believe not only will the small liquor stores be hurt, but the small wineries. Grocery stores have huge buying power. They'll be able to buy big brand names, and they won't carry little, 
little guys like us, small wineries like Six Mile Creek, Americana, J.R. Dill, we'll all be hurt. Fields are turning green in the fertile Natticoke Valley. Most of this produce is mm -hmm. destined for farmers markets or roadside stands, mm -hmm. retail sales. But if it's enacted, a new requirement that state agencies buy at least 20% of their food locally would magnify wholesale demand. Right now we're buying from all over the country uh, and I think we should first and foremost support our local farmers uh, in New York State and certainly uh, uh, our agriculture industry rather than buying from from California or Ohio or other states. Filling orders from state-funded food programs, which presumably would include schools, could prompt farmers to put idle land into production, says country wagon produce owner Andrea Eichhorn. They have land that, you know, might not be producing um, and making them profit, so I think they could adjust and I think there's lots of opportunity for the agricultural industry in the area and all across the state. But demand for food is year-round, while local farms have distinct seasons. Grower Nichelle Wade wants local food processing to be yes, part of I'm this. Really I think um, adding in some local processing is really going to make this realistic. The restaurants, the hospitals, the schools, of course they want to use the local products, but they really need it in some kind of processed form. So we need to find a way to get that produce, capture it when it's fresh in season, maybe process Process it so that it can and warehouse it and distribute it locally. The buy local bill is now in the state assembly. We hope you enjoyed that. When we come back, Big Blue turns 100. We'll have a pair of stories on IBM's Big Day. I'm Norm Poultonson. I've published the Central New York Business Journal for 25 years. Our success is based on the fact that we know only one audience, owners and managers of businesses in Central New York. We publish stories for them, we don't offer sound bites, and we always source our information. Maybe technology's changed since I started publishing 25 years ago, but not our mission. You can always rely on the Central New York Business Journal providing your business news. Welcome back. Forbes magazine recently reported that IBM earned $100 billion in sales the same year this year that it turns 100 years old. Now, the company was born in the southern tier of New York State, and Steve Craig has a pair of stories about Big Blue's centennial. That merger a hundred years ago created CTR, the Computing Tabulating Recording Company, renamed IBM in 1924, which is also about the time Endicott began its transformation from a shoemaking village to a global seat of technical innovation. By the 1950s, the complex that fanned out from the intersection of North and McKinley was where thousands of careers were launched. It was great. I started in the apprentice course. I worked myself up the ladder. I ended up as a staff engineer, and I was building machines for making the 360 stuff, you know. It was a lot of fun. I traveled all over. I had a heck of a good time. Bill was one of the hundreds of retirees marking the company's milestone. But today's story wasn't all past tense. And we still have a workforce here, not as big as it was, uh, but a very vibrant workforce, very technical work workforce, and, and a very innovative workforce. For example, the chips that power top gaming systems can trace their origins to Endicott. Also on display today, artwork by kids who go to the school, named for company founder Thomas Watson. Will there be places for them at the new IBM, where the jobs are not in manufacturing, but rather in problem solving? You know, they should still be looking at technology. They should still be looking at innovation. They should still be thinking about uh, what they can do to help solve the world's problems over the next hundred years. 
Estelle Berger turned 91 today, but she remembers life as a newlywed, working at IBM as if it were yesterday. Estelle Berger lived in a rooming house where this credit union now stands, just about a block or so from IBM where she worked. World War II was on and IBM was doing a lot of top secret stuff. Estelle worked in security and in fact, she was technically in the army. One day she was guarding a top secret area when some executives came through. All but one had the proper ID. And I said, you gentlemen may proceed to go into the door, but this gentleman must stay here. I said, if you wait a minute, I'll get a badge from you down the front desk. The man at the front desk picked so, up the phone. Uh, he says, Berger, who you got there? Mr. Thomas J. Watson. I heard the phone go bang on his desk. What? I said, he said, did you say who I thought you said? I'm not saying it again. It's, yes, it's Mr. Thomas J. Watson. Burger. I said, oh, here's where I get fired for sure. But she didn't. It had been Watson's way of testing security, and she had passed. Among those wishing her happy birthday today, Eugene Rogers, also 91 years old. His 40 years of IBM service included his four years in the Army, during which time IBM sent care packages on all holidays. All the people in my outfit couldn't understand the fact that a company would have the heart to do something like that. They had never heard of a company that had had the feelings that IBM had. And of course, the same is with me. That's the way I feel about IBM. The reason, Gene says IBM rewarded his ambition with opportunity, which allowed him to rise through the ranks of the engineering department, even though the Great Depression had cut his formal schooling short. We hope you enjoyed that. And that does it for this episode of the CNY Business Connection. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, I'm Jason Weinstein. Have a good one. I've published the Central New York Business Journal for 25 years. Our success is based on the fact that we know only one audience, owners and managers of businesses in Central New York. We publish stories for them, we don't offer sound bites, and we always source our information. Maybe technology's changed since I started publishing 25 years ago, but not our mission. You can always rely on the Central New York Business Journal providing your business news.